Hi, it's Mike Anderson from Gear Diary, and um, I wanted to do an unboxing of the Google Nexus 7 tablet. Now, I'm not overly enamored of unboxings. They're kind of fun sometimes, but I think they've been a little bit overplayed. The reason I want to do this is I've heard nothing but terrible things about the way that it's packed in there. And so, simultaneous to getting this Nexus 7, I also got from Griffin Technology, who I really like, their MIDI Connect interface. So I wanted to kind of do also a packaging comparison. Uh, later on in the next couple days, we'll take a more in-detail look at the Nexus 7, and I really can't wait to sync my uh, music stuff into the MIDI Connect and the iPad. So anyway, let's start off. Actually, why don't I start off with the MIDI Connect? It's got a number of little plastic tabs uh, that hold it in place. So I'll just pretend that I don't have a cutting tool near me and just try to work it that way. Uh, let's see what we've got in here. Should be a fairly simple device. Uh, one side comes off, and it looks like it's packaged back to front. You know, and I have re tape, and it is. So what we have, the entirety is, and that is all that is in the box. What we have is a little kind of warranty of the product, user guide, which is a fold-out. tells you how to hook up keyboards and devices and then clip into your iPad. And then it's in a snap-in plastic. Right, you actually have what looks like about, and I really have to check this out now, I really hadn't even thought about it, um, a very, very small, uh, about a one foot long uh, iPad connector to a satisfyingly heavy this thing weighs, I don't even know, it weighs more than scissors. It, it's considerable weight, um, which is a, a good thing, just in case it's not clear. You sit this on the table, you plug in your mini DIN connectors to your MIDI device, and this thing's going to stay solid. So that's actually kind of a cool thing. Um, now, clear that out of the way, now let's get to the Nexus 7. So what we start with is, you've got one of those sleeve type things. Now, that moves that. And just in case you hadn't already made the connection, the seven shape there for the Nexus 7. Next, there is, well, what is there? There is a double tape, which is kind of interesting, almost like it was taped, reopened, and retaped. Um, side panel. And, and it actually does look exactly like that, because on this side, I can see that one was removed. So for that one, this is, tape is strong enough, I am going to remove it with a pair of scissors. Okay, so now after cutting open both sides with the scissors, and it seemed like this side was fairly solid, this one did have both. Now let's try to get this thing out. It didn't immediately slide. It's, again, very interesting the extent to which it's packed. All right, I have the top off, and right at the top you can see there is the Nexus device itself. And we've got a insert, documentation insert, which removes and in there we have quick start guide, warranty, rather a robust warranty coverage, a charging dock with a real um, know, kind of a, a strange looking uh, design. I don't know if you can see the way that it actually tapers out so that if you're trying to put it near something else, it'll take up more space. Um, it, it's a nice wall wart design. And when I say nice wall wart, what I mean is there's no such thing as a nice wall wart. Um, they call them that for a reason. This is, in, in case there was any question who's making this, this one does say Asus, and then you've got the USB connection. Um, and you do have the well-wrapped plastic, and um, I'm going to go ahead and take it off. Now I have also near me, I have my Kindle Fire, and as these devices are very similar, here's the, the Nexus device itself, which I have upside down because here's a front-facing camera, and um, let's see if I can, if there is any battery. Well, there does appear to be. I'm getting a little Google logo. 
Now, while that's working, I've got this in a wonderful Oberon case, and when we did GearFest, everyone was really enamored with that, that case, and it's just a wonderful thing. But let me take it out just so we can do the, the better comparison. And so now it's out. Now, just looking at the initial comparison, these things are very close to the same size. Thickness is actually also fairly close. It looks like the Nexus is the same thickness. However, the tapered design gives it the illusion of being a bit thinner. It is actually taller. And then when it comes to width, it's about the, the same overall. Again, these have the same size screen. Um, the Nexus does have the camera, the front-facing camera, um, which is you know, obviously something that Kindle Fire doesn't have. Uh, Kindle Fire has simply the headphone jack, USB jack, power button on it, whereas on the Nexus you've got USB and you have the, uh, the 3.5mm jack here. You have power and volume rocker here, uh, as well as a 4-pin docking system. So that's it for the quick startup, and then we'll come back in a little bit with some initial impressions after I go ahead and enter all my stuff and get started. Okay, I've had a quick chance just to sign in and uh, start to open a few things. There's just a little bit of battery that was in this charge. It's actually set up so it did detect my um, my username for Gmail. It uh, quickly picked up our home network. It knew the correct time zone that I was in, so that it, some device you'll get they'll be on California time or wherever else. This got the the correct time. I had updates available, so I went ahead and did that. Um, the interface, the initial interface screen, and I'll have to explore more, does have kind of that curated uh, Kindle Fire uh, type of interface. The other thing I noticed right away is it is very quick, but you know, again, this is just, I have done nothing but go into the apps and start to get things installed a little bit, so it'll be very interesting um, over the next day or so to take a look and see how, um, how it sets up. One thing that I immediately didn't like was that it started to try to download my entire uh, Google Play library. Um, fortunately, I know it doesn't do that with Amazon, where I have more apps on Amazon, but just to have it try to install everything that I own simultaneously um, can kind of clog up our, our network. So I'll go through and install things, and then we'll continue on with the further hands-on. 